Hi guys! Welcome sa Engine Nerd Math Channel. Sa video na ito, ituturo ko sa inyo ang fundamental principle of counting. So kung gusto nyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. Okay, so this time, ituturo ko naman sa inyo ang fundamental principle of counting. So ano ba ang fundamental principle of counting? So basically, Ginagamit natin ito sa probability and statistics. Since sa probability and stats natin is inaaral natin yung likelihood or percentage ng possibility ng isang event to happen. Para magawa yun, kailangan nating malaman yung total number of outcomes for an event. So, isang way para makuha yon is the use of fundamental principle of counting. So, kasi sa fundamental principle of counting, so... Makukuha natin yung total number of ways, let's say meron tayong event 1, event 2, and event 3, and so on. And then yung certain events na yon is merong specific number of possible outcomes. So kapag together, kinonsider natin lahat ng events na yon with their specific number of outcomes for each event, makukuha natin yung total number of possible outcomes for that combination of events using fundamental principle of counting. So, let's have the definition. So, fundamental principle of counting, if an activity can be performed in M ways, and if, when it has been done, a second activity can be performed in N ways, and when that has been done, a third can be performed in O ways, and so on, then the number of ways in which they can all be performed in the order stated is M times N times P times dot dot dot. Or, since O yung ginamit natin sa third event, it should be O. Okay, M times N times O times dot, dot, dot. So, ibig sabihin ko, meron tayong events 1, 2, at 3. Tapos, yung number of ways daw na pwedeng ma-perform yung event 1 is M ways, right? And then, yung event 2 together is N ways. And then, yung event 3 together is O ways. And then, pwede pa tayong magdagdag ng events 4, 5, and so on. So, the number of ways in which they can all be performed together is the product lang ng M times N times O times dot 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 and so on. Okay? So, as an example, sabi, an outfit can be chosen from 5 shirts, 4 pants, 3 socks, and 2 shoes. How many possible combinations are there? Okay, so meron tayong 5 shirts sa isang event agad yon, And then, 4 pants, isang event, 3 socks, isang event, and 2 shoes, isang event. So, therefore, meron tayong total of 4 events. Actually, hindi siya events, pero scenario kung saan pwede tayong mamili ng ating outfits. So, para makuha yung possible number of combinations, so, dahil meron tayong apat na events, let's put 4 blanks. So, yung first event natin sa outfit is yung pipiliin nating shirts, right? So, let's say event S for shirts. So, ilan yung choices natin? 5, right? So, Sulat natin, 5 choices for event S, for shirts. Then, sa second event is pants, let's say event P. So, meron tayong 4 choices. And then, sa third event, we have socks, let's so, say SO. Then, meron tayong 3 choices. And then, last, para sa shoes, let's say event SH, meron naman tayong 2 choices. So, therefore, yung total possible combinations is the product lang nitong 5 times 4, times 3, times 2. So, ilan yan? 120. So, imagine, meron kang 120 combinations na outfit na pwede mong isuot kapag pinagpilian mo is itong given natin na bilang ng shirts, pants, socks, and shoes. Okay? So, let's have more examples para mas ma-illustrate pa natin yung fundamental principle of counting. So, for the first one, we have, in preparing his class schedule, a student has a choice of one of the five sections in English and any one of the three sections in algebra. Determine the number of ways he can prepare his schedule. Okay, so meron na tayong student na pipili sa limang sections ng English at tatlong sections ng algebra. So meron tayong two events. Event sa pagpili sa English, so let's say E, event E for English, and event A for algebra. So sa English, meron siyang... 5 sections na pagpipilian. So, sulat natin 5. And then, sa algebra, meron siyang 3 sections na pagpipilian. Sulat natin 3. And then, yung total number of ways na pwede niyang i-prepare yung schedule niya is product lang nitong 5 times 3, right? By fundamental principle of counting. Which is equal to 15. Okay? Next, how many 2-digit numbers can be represented using 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 
if A repetition is allowed, B repetition is not allowed. Okay, sa bubuo daw tayo ng two-digit numbers. From this, number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, dahil meron tayong two-digit numbers, susulat tayo ng dalawang space. So, ito is for the tens digit, and then ito is for the ones digit, right? Ngayon, dun muna tayo sa A repetition is allowed. So, ibig sabihin ng repetition is allowed, pwedeng maulit-ulit itong 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 dito sa two-digit number. So, dito muna tayo sa tens. So, ilan dito sa 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 ang pwede nating ilagay as tens? So, obviously, apat lang. Kasi itong 0, hindi pwedeng maging 0 yung tens digit natin unless magiging 1 digit lang yon right? So, dapat at least 1 yung value niya para consider 2 digit. So, therefore, meron tayong 4 choices sa tens digit. So, sulat natin 4. Okay? Ngayon sa ones. So, this time, pwede na yung 0, right? Kasi, pwede tayo magkaroon ng 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. So, therefore, pwede na lahat ng choices na to sa ones. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Total of 5. Bakit pwede na? Kasi, Sabi, repetition is allowed. So, ibig sabihin, pwedeng maulat. So, kung nagamit natin sa tens digit is itong 1, pwede pa rin siya dito sa 1's digit. Pwedeng maging 11, right? So, therefore, sa 1's, meron tayong 5 choices. So, therefore, pag minultiply natin to for A, if repetition is allowed, ang pwede nating mabuong 2-digit number is 4 times 5 or 20. Now, for B, if repetition is not allowed. So, again, since 2 digit, right ulit tayo ng dalawang blank. So, this time, same pa rin tayo sa tens, right? Ilang choices, apat pa rin, right? Kasi hindi pwede yung zero. Now, this time, for the ones, dito na tayo magkakaroon ng change ng number of possible choices. Kasi, if repetition is allowed, hindi tayo pwedeng umulit. So, ibig sabihin, so, pwede na dito sa 1's yung 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So, 5. Kaso, hindi siya 5 kasi nga repetition is not allowed. Ibig sabihin, kung nga rin, assume natin na nagamit na sa 10's yung 1. Therefore, ilan na lang pagpipilian natin? 0, 2, 3, 4, right? Likewise, kung nagamit na yung 2 sa 10's, apat na lang din. 0, 1, 3, 4. And following the same pattern for 3, 4, right? So, therefore, Ang number of choice na lang natin for once if repetition is not allowed is 4 na lang. Okay? So, therefore, if we multiply 4 times 4, we have 16. So, ang pwede nating mabuong 2-digit number if repetition is not allowed is 16. Next, okay? we have if there are exactly 2 different routes from city A to city B, 3 from city B to city C, and 4 from city C to city D, how many possible routes are there from A to D? Okay, so meron tayong C, T, A, B, C, at D. And then meron tayong different number of roads going from one city to the other. So since kailangan nating makapunta from C, T, A, to B, to C, until C, T, D. And then meron tayong different number of roads from A to B, B to C, and C to D. Meron tayong three events. So sulat tayong three blanks. So, let's say yung first blank is for the event na magpupunta tayo from A to B. So, meron tayong two choices na routes for A to B, right? So, sulat natin two. And then, yung next blank is from B to C naman. So, meron tayong three routes na pwedeng pagpilian from B to C. Sulat natin three. And then, lastly, from C to D, meron tayong four choices na routes na pagpipilian. So, sulat natin four. And then, yung total number of ways na pwede tayong makapunta from A to D is product lang nitong 2 times 3 times 4 or 24. Okay? Next, we have in how many ways may a three true or false questions be answered? Okay, so meron daw tayong 3 questions na ang pwede lang natin isagot is true or false. So, therefore, meron tayong tatlong events. So, question 1, question 2, and question 3. So, dahil true or false nga lang yung pwede natin isagot, sa bawat question, dalawa lang yung choice natin, true or false. So, sulat natin, sa first question is two choices, second question, two then, and the third question, two then. So, pag multiply natin itong tatlo, two times two times two is eight. So, therefore, meron tayong eight ways para masagutan yung tatlong true or false questions. So, actually, pwede natin itong isulat as three diagram. So, let's say meron tayong first question, Second question and third question. So, sa first question, meron tayong dalawang possible answers. So, true 
and false, right? Then sa second question, meron ulit tayong dalawang possible answer, true or false. So, kung sa first question natin, sinagutan natin na true, so pwede tayong magkaroon ng two possible ways para masagutan yung second question as true or false then. And then, kung yung uh, first question naman is sinagutan natin na false, pwede rin tayo magkaroon ng true and false answer din sa second question. Now, lastly, for third question, so urong natin. So, kung yung first natin is true and then yung second natin is true, pwede tayo magkaroon ng choice na either true at false sa third question. And then, kung true yung first, then second is false, pwede din tayo magkaroon ng pangatlong sagot as true or false. Then, kapag false yung first and true yung second, pwede tayo magkaroon ng true or false sa third answer. And lastly, kung false yung first and false yung second, pwede rin tayo magkaroon ng true or false sa third question. So therefore, kapag nilist natin yung mga possible combinations ng sagot, pwede tayong magkaroon ng true, 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 false, true, false, true, true, false, false, And then, false, true, true. Pwede rin false, true, false. Pwede rin false, false, true. And lastly, false, false, false. So, dapat, ang total number nito is 8. So, bilangin natin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, therefore, nagtali sa sagot natin using fundamental principle of counting. Okay, so I think that's it for this video, Fundamental Principle of Counting. So, sana yung may natutunan kayo sa video na to at maraming salamat sa panunood.